Oh my goodness, this is such a great feature. I'm so excited. The designer in me is just bursting with joy. My name is Angela and I'm a visually impaired designer. Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Welcome to today's video where I'll be telling you all about my favorite features on my iPhone for accessibility. Some of these features can also be helpful to the average person who don't necessarily have a disability. First, I want to make it clear that I'm not being sponsored by Apple or anything. This is just my own personal opinions and I wanted to share what has worked well for me. Currently, I use the iPhone SE. My iPhone is also up to date to the new iOS 14 version. And so some of the things that I'll be talking about are only available on iOS 14. All right, so the first feature I'm gonna tell you about only applies to people who have iPhones that are iPhone 8 or later. And so mine doesn't have this ability, but I'm gonna tell you about it anyways because it is a huge game changer. It's called a back tap. So all you have to do is tap your phone twice and you can set in your settings what will pull up if you tap the back of your phone twice. And then if you tap it three times, you can also set it up to do another thing. I wanted to make sure that it's clear that this double tap feature is super helpful for anyone. It doesn't have to be used just for disabilities. This can be used by anyone to access any app or any function that you want in your phone. So if you want it to be your clock, your calendar, you want it to bring up a certain app, it can do all of that. I'm just pointing out the examples that could be helpful for someone who's visually impaired for an example. So this is huge because you could set it up to do something that works well for you, that you use often, that you don't necessarily always want to be on. For example, if you use voiceover some of the time but you don't always want it to be on, you could set it up so that when you double tap, voiceover turns on, and then when you double tap again, it will turn voiceover off. And then you could also set it up for the triple tap to be Siri so that you could speak to Siri and use that feature when you want to without having to do the normal way of using Siri. The second thing I have for you is more of a tip than a feature. So something that I like to do is to make sure that I have a non-busy background, something that's not like a complicated image or photo so that the contrast between the icons, the apps and everything, it makes it easier for me to read and find where I need to go and navigate without being distracted with the background. For me, I like to have darker backgrounds because it helps the icons pop out for me and it makes it easier for me to read the text with the contrast of the black on the white. So really taking the time to find a background that works well for you is going to help you out a lot. All right, so like how I mentioned, you can do the back tap, but if you don't have that feature because your phone's not as new, there's other ways to easily access the accessibility settings or have shortcuts. So I'll show you a couple of ways that I find helpful. So if you triple tap the home button, you can see that you can access your magnifier, your voiceover, and your zoom. Now you can customize what things show up on this menu in your settings. This way you can decide which ones you want to see here and which ones you don't necessarily use on a regular basis. So these are the three that I use on a regular basis that I decided to put in my menu. And then you can also swipe up and go to your control panel or your control center and customize what you can see here. So for me, I have the accessibility shortcuts. This shows that I can access my voiceover and zoom, similar to what I was just looking at. I also have the easy access to the magnifier. I also have easy access to turning dark mode on and off and being able to change the text size of my screen. So this could be super helpful if I like it normally to be in the middle here, but I'm on a document or a website or something that has particularly small text. I can go ahead and go in here and change to the text size and customize it to whatever I'm looking at. So that's super helpful and handy. A couple of other helpful things in the control panel are the possibility of changing the brightness of your screen so I can make it bright. I can then turn it back down to low if I want it to be really low. I can also change the volume in here. So if it's really loud or something and I want to be able to change that depending on if you can hear well or if you need it to be louder. 
So these are just a couple of quick ways to access your accessibility shortcuts or features that you use on a regular basis. All right, so let's look at some of these features I just mentioned a little closer up. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up to like it. Comment below what you like about it and what your favorite features of the iPhone are. I reply to all the comments that I receive on my videos and I'd love to interact and talk with you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. All right, so the first one I wanna look at is the magnifier. So I'm gonna go ahead and access it through my control panel. Then you can see that you can zoom in or out and that can help you look at things closer or you can go even out farther. You can change the brightness of what you're looking at to help you see it. You can also change the contrast. So maybe in the environment you're in, there's not quite enough contrast or it's too high, so you can change it there. You can even add a filter if you want to, or you can turn on your flashlight to make it so that what you're looking at is brighter and you can see it better. All right, so in here you can take pictures or multiple shots or pictures so that you can zoom in closer if that's helpful to you instead of doing it live. So for example, if I was recording this video like I am and I want to see in this on my iPad that I'm recording on how long this clip has been so far, I can zoom in and see here that it says 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Whereas from here, I can't visually see it without the aid of my phone. So that's super helpful to me to be able to read something like that. And you can use it for so many different things. You could use it for a piece of paper that you have or trying to read a sign or whatever you're trying to read in front of you. All right, so the next feature I wanna show you how it works is the zoom feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and triple click on my home button and I'm gonna choose zoom. And then you're going to see that there's a big box that's essentially a magnifier, but it's actually magnifying your screen, not in your environment. And so if I move it up so that I can see my icons, it can help me see the things that I might not be able to see with my bare eye. It magnifies it by a significant amount. And then if I go into a specific app, say I want to look something up on Google, I can go ahead and go here and it will help me. I can highlight the keyboard if I have a hard time seeing the keyboard and then it will make it easier for me to type. Then it refocused it to what I was searching so I can make sure that I can see what I am typing. And you can move it around the screen however you want to to help you best see everything on the screen. So this is a visual thing helping you read things it isn't necessarily talk to you like voiceover or Siri, but if you wanted to just be able to look closer at something that's on your screen, this is a great way to go. The next feature that might be helpful to you is turning on or off dark mode. Now dark mode is essentially where everything is inverted so that the screen is higher contrast. It's usually black or dark, dark gray, and then the text is white so that there's higher contrast it doesn't, isn't as bright, doesn't exuberate so much bright screens. It's been shown or proven that people have an easier time looking at a screen that's darker than lighter. So this is a super helpful feature to be able to toggle on and off whenever I feel like my eyes need a little bit of a rest. The last feature I already mentioned was being able to change the text size. Now this is very helpful to me because there are some apps where I need larger text than others. For example, Instagram tends to be really small and I need it to be larger. So if you go into Instagram, we can look and see that normally the text is fairly small. I can't read it without help. So if I go ahead and go to my control panel and I go to the text, you can watch how I can turn up the text size. I can go back into Instagram and now the text is significantly larger for me. I can see everything on here a lot clearer. And this is definitely a feature that I use on a regular basis. In general, I try to keep my text size in the middle so that I can see most things and then I'll tweak it if I need to. Sometimes I'll even make it smaller 
because I want to be able to fit more on the screen. Another helpful feature that's been around since I think the iPhone 4 is being able to turn on a flash alert with your flashlight. So this means that anytime you get a notification on your phone, whether it's a text or from an application or a phone call, you'll see a flashing light from your flashlight and it will alert you when you have something going on. So if you can't hear a ding, it will show you that you have a notification. Also, this could be helpful if you're in like a meeting or church or somewhere where you shouldn't be having sounds on your phone. You could turn this alert on and then you could still know when you receive notifications. On that same note, the next feature I'm going to talk about is the new Siri to type. Until up to this point, in order to interact with Siri, you had to use your voice and talk to her to interact with her and then she would speak back to you. But now there's a feature where you can type out what you want Siri to look up. Basically, it's like Google or any other search engine but it's like built into your system. And, and so it can do whatever tasks you can normally do with Siri, but you just type out what you want it to do. And then instead of saying it back, she will write it out for you. And this could be helpful for people who are deaf or hard of hearing because previously Siri was not accessible to them. They weren't able to use Siri very well. Say you have a hard time with speaking or you have a thick accent you have a slur or whatever your reason is, you're not good at speaking, you can now type your response and receive something back. This also could be helpful if you're in an environment where you wanna look something up, but you can't necessarily speak or listen to Siri speak back to you. The next feature is also gonna make a huge impact. This is the sound recognition feature. I think it has a really good start and they're probably going to build upon it in the future and that makes me very excited. So basically there's a series of sounds that the phone can recognize at any point if you have this feature on. And so one of them is if you knock on the door or if you hear a fire alarm, if you hear water running, if there's a baby crying, these kinds of things. And if you, the phone recognizes that that's a sound, it sends you an alert that says, I may have heard this sound, so you might want to check it out. And this is a huge thing for someone who is hearing impaired because these are all very important things to be able to hear. What if you're in a building you're not familiar with and they don't have flashing lights like they should for a fire alarm, and so you're not aware that you should be rushing out of the building? This is going to be a super helpful tool. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so I've been playing with the sound recognition feature. I wanted to see how it works so I could show you a little demonstration. So I have the door not toggled on, and so we're gonna use this wall to knock and see if my phone recognizes it. All right, so I just got a notification that says door knock. The sound has been recognized that may be a door knock. So that's pretty cool that it works so seamlessly. Okay, you guys, this Next feature is the one I'm most excited to share with you. This is, oh my goodness, this is such a great feature. I'm so excited. The designer in me is just bursting with joy. Okay, so let's look at it. So it's called voice recognition. So this is a feature within voiceover, which if you're not familiar with what voiceover is, it's kind of a setting you can go into where your iPad, your phone, or your computer will talk and tell you what they're seeing on the screen. This is super helpful to someone who's completely blind or even legally blind, someone who can't see very well what is on the screen. But now, you guys, there's so many features that were added that are huge. All right, so the options that the voice recognition can do is it can tell you what's in an image, if there's an image that also has text that's written on it, so like a meme or something else like that, it's supposedly able to recognize the text that's on an image and read it to you and tell you what the image is, which is a huge problem for people with a visual impairment and has always been an issue. And the third feature you can turn on within the voiceover is screen recognition. So it can tell you what's on the screen and describe it more than it could before. Okay, so let's look at some images on Google to see how this works. 
I'm going to search up cute dogs because I want to see some pictures of some dogs. The 25 cutest dog breeds, most adorable dogs and puppies. Image. Actions available. A dog sitting on a grassy field. That's so cool. So it could tell me that there was a dog sitting on grass in a field. Let's see what this one says. Is that really a puppy? Looks like a cute baby seal. Awesome <laughs> elegy. Cute kittens. Cute puppies. Cute so if this is something that you're going to try, go ahead and try it and let me know how it works. I'm going to play around with it a little more and maybe I can do an updated video on it. Well, that's all of the features that I personally use to help me with my accessibility on the phone and a couple that I don't use that might be helpful to some of you. Let me know in the comments below which one you're most excited to try out and to start using. If you want to learn more about how you can set up these different features on your phone, make sure to come back next Monday for my video on how I'll show exactly how you can set it up and customize it just for your personal needs. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye!